In the ever-evolving world of content creation, a captivating trend has re-emerged. If you've been on the internet in the past year, I'm sure you've stumbled across an IRL stream or one of the many viral clips they produce. Short for in real life, unlike traditional streams seated at a desktop, IRL streaming refers to going out into the unscripted land of public interaction, thus creating a more authentic and immersive connection with audiences. Anytime you livestream, you run the risk of something unexpected happening that you can't control or edit out. However, that's exactly why this new wave of drama-induced IRL streams has taken over social media basically serving as live-streamed reality TV. Yo, just back up, just stop, just stop, just stop. I'm just saying, y'all say Yo, just stop, tell them to stop, tell them to stop, tell them to stop. Oh, 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 oh. The IRL streaming, like going out in public and streaming is popping off way more than anything else right now. Yeah, currently. like, including like YouTube. Oh yeah, for like, sure. While they do provide an interesting behind-the-scenes look into the lives of some of the biggest streamers, in this video we'll not only first see how IRL became one of the hottest trends every creator is hopping on, but also why you have to be careful because as fans will continue to demand more exciting, better production, and longer streams broadcasting every second of your life to millions of online viewers can definitely have its consequences. I'm live 24-7. The cameras never turn off. I show you everything. This life doesn't feel real. My life doesn't even feel real anymore. I think I need to go back home. People now gotta go do an IRL stream. Fuck up all their manners and morals in order to top that person to go viral and relevant. That's what streaming is now. I don't have a personal life. My personal life is my stream. I like to call it life streaming. Prior to this 2023 IRL renaissance with streamers such as Aiden Ross, Kai Sinet, Neon, and Fusi, who we'll get into more in a second, for years Ice Poseidon was the face of IRL streaming, a pioneer as Rolling Stone calls him. In fact, it was Ice Poseidon who actually inspired Twitch to add IRL as a new genre back in 2016 after the hype of Pokemon Go motivated him to take his streams on the road, starting with just a cell phone before upgrading to a GoPro connected to his iPad, then later this makeshift camera and 4G modem rig he built himself allowing HD video output in real time, Ice Poseidon was laying the blueprint for IRL streaming right in front of our eyes. I saw a, a gap in the market. I knew people wanted to watch a real person being a real person. You don't know what's gonna happen if you walk up and talk to somebody. Is this person gonna be funny? Are they gonna hate me? Averaging around 20,000 viewers on Twitch, not even a quarter of what today's biggest streamers allegedly pull in minutes, carrying his camera around with him everywhere, Ice quickly learned that the crazier his streams were, the more viewers he'd attract. An idea still extremely evident here in 2023. Yo, what are you doing, bro? Yo, dude, what the f are you doing, dog? Are you what the? F Hi. I'm getting about 30 calls about you on my phone, and I'm a, I'm a gangster. So you better f leave here right now. You understand that you with the mob over here. You better leave now. Got I, it? I apologize. However, Ice's 2017 Twitch run was cut short, as after streaming himself one day in an airport, a viewer decided to call in a fake bomb threat under his name, leading to him getting swatted in the incident making national news. I don't know where I am, I'm just on 53A, is my, that's my gate. And I'm not sure telling you guys that is a good idea, but I, I, what, what can you possibly do, right? Several passengers who were on the plane tell me that the man who was removed was taking a video of himself. He was running around with a GoPro. Despite arguing the situation was out of his control, Ice Poseidon then received the first ever permanent ban on Twitch due to a swatting. In an effort to provoke a dramatic response, viewers will occasionally call the police on a streamer or make fake threats to public places they're at since they're broadcasting their location to the entire world. As you'll notice, this concept known as swatting is just one of the many problems Ice Poseidon face that today's IRL streamers do as well, only now on a much larger scale. But Twitch's controversial decision to permanently ban Ice no doubt left a big hole in the IRL community, especially back in 2017 when Twitch had a chokehold on the live streaming market, a ban on there was detrimental to a streamer's career. It really looked like 2017 would be the peak of IRL streaming. Just three years later though came the COVID pandemic, forcing everybody to stay inside. As a result, the entire live streaming industry exploded as Twitch alone saw an 83% increase in watch hours compared to the year prior, along with numerous new names blowing up on the platform. As the clear number one streaming site with little competition, Twitch was able to enforce whatever rules they honestly wanted, and these past few years they've only continued this strict stance, banning some of their biggest accounts for dumb reasons. However, as we're about to see, a new platform offering better revenue splits and more lenient policies was right around the corner, spearheaded by one of Twitch's former biggest streamers, Aiden Ross. 
Following his 8th ban on Twitch, Aiden Ross knew it was time for a change. So when newly launched Kit came knocking with the highest paid streaming contract in history, Aiden made his move official via this LeBron James style announcement in February of 2023, claiming that he also now owns a percentage of Kick's company. Backed by the online casino Stake.com, Kick was founded with two main goals. First, to offer streamers 95% of their revenue and only keep 5, which compared to Twitch's 50-50 revenue split at the time was a big improvement. But then second, what Kick is really key on is their lenient policies and less focus on censorship. I can say whatever I want. Oh my god, this is insane! Now, there were definitely still lines that had to be drawn, like when Aiden pulled up the hub to his mostly younger audience in an attempt to prove how limitless Kick was, as well as also super illegally livestream the Super Bowl to 100,000 people. Regardless though, this freedom of not worrying about breaking strict terms of service and instantly getting banned was enticing to many creators. Featuring a very similar interface as Twitch, after signing Aiden Ross, Kick continued to go after more of their competitors' top talent, soon landing XQC in another mind-blowing $100 million deal, as well as other streamers such as Amaranth, Your Rage, Tifu, Nick, Nick Merckx, and even Ice Poseidon to name a few. However, you would have never guessed the streamer who not only had the most unexpected comeback of the year, but who also helped bring more attention to the IRL scene than ever before. A total opposite from his old scripted prank videos, YouTube legend FoosyTube began his non-stop subathon stream on Twitch in July. While other established streamers had been experimenting with IRL, and of course long desktop streams are nothing new, as viewers began joining Fousey's never-ending livestream, it didn't take long to notice that this 33-year-old man was not mentally stable. I'm right here! Yeah. I'm right here! You pointed the camera at you, man. You pointed it there, I swear to God, on everything I love, you pointed it there. My friend, you have one job, it's not that hard. I'm getting annoyed! Yo, yo, People yo. don't stop f***ing texting me! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> While Fousey has been open in the past about his struggles with depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder, the difference was now thousands of people were watching him spiral out of control live on the internet, encouraging him to push his limit for their entertainment. Just like Ice Poseidon, Fousey noticed that the crazier his streams were, the more views and attention would come his way. To no surprise, Fousey was banned on Twitch in August after being hit with multiple suspensions forcing him to end his stream on day 21. Dear Twitch, I love you so much, but you dropped the ball hard. I signed with Kick this week. Whether they wanted to or not, Kick has gained this reputation as the home of where these wild IRL streams go down. And while it's still too early to tell how long they can keep this up, not to mention streamers like Pokemon have already said they'd never go to Kick due to its gambling background, the addition of Fousey to the roster though meant even more crazy IRL streams were on the way. I'm on the Miami freeway by the way. Watch out, watch out, whoa, whoa. Fousey's non-stop energy and ability to create entertaining content out of nothing was growing his kick audience basically by the hour. Averaging around 15,000 viewers at the time, that number would quickly increase after flying out to Miami in August linking up with Aiden Ross to discuss his kick contract, streaming with some of Aiden's friends including Neon and Sneeko, as well as another viral stream where he slapped Jack Doherty, the 20-year-old bottle-flipping YouTuber turned OF manager and kick streamer living in this $30,000 per month Miami mansion, but who most of you have probably only seen when there's a fight going down, which makes sense after reading his kick the reason why these IRL streams are so popular right now is actually quite simple. Nowadays, these mainstream streamers are legit celebrities, and some of their influence on the youth is crazy. So with these IRL streams now offering their fans a genuine look into their daily lives, doing activities such as going to the gym, going out to eat, sitting courtside at a heat game, riding in the Sprinter van, bringing us to David Dobrik's A-list Halloween party, exploring the streets of Japan, losing millions of dollars gambling, and even as far as showering and going to the bathroom. I love the things these guys put in the urinals that make it smell good. Love it. With IRL streams, viewers feel a stronger sense of connection almost as if they're personally hanging out with these streamers while they read the chat and answer questions using text-to-speech. But another big reason we're seeing this IRL scene blow up again is due to all of the viral clips they produce. The funniest and of course most chaotic moments from these IRL streams make for daily short-form content to post all over TikTok and Instagram reels, in addition to chopping them up for daily uploads on YouTube as well. If you've ever streamed before, you probably know that especially on Twitch, discoverability is not very good, and the best way to gain an audience is through posting short-form clips. If Ice Poseidon was doing what he was doing when TikTok and YouTube Shorts etc were a thing, he'd be through the f***ing roof massive. In fact, today many of these streamers such as Aiden Ross and Jack Doherty even have systems in place where they pay fans to post their clips for them. Join my Discord, become a clipper, use hashtag Jack Doherty, post the clips uh, for my stream and you get paid to post the clips. 
IRL streams are honestly the new reality television. Slowly adding new plot points and characters as they go, it's hard for fans to click away and miss what might possibly happen next. Unfortunately, we have started to see some scripted IRL content, like Neon getting jumped by Punch Made Dev, but for the most part, it's authentic. However, sometimes maybe a little too authentic. <laughs> Like, yo, was that Fousey shit real? Like, everyone thinks it's fake, but it's like, he's literally in a mental hospital right now and it's been <laughs> yeah, over a month, yeah. so it's like, <laughs> it's yeah, real. Like, real. it's not like, we, we can't stage that. Fousey's kickstream was put to an abrupt stop by law enforcement just 12 days in. After calling the police to his Miami hotel room claiming that somebody was stalking him, as thousands of viewers watched, it was instead Fousey who left in handcuffs before being admitted into a mental hospital for the next two months. You guys are dumb as f man. You guys are literally dumb as f this guy is the most wild roller coaster ride of a human I've ever seen, one fan commented. The incredible highs and lows he hits with his mental and physical health is insane. To be a good streamer, especially in the IRL space, you have to constantly work to keep your viewers entertained as they'll continue to want bigger and better streams, which today seems to equal crazier and more riskier streams. Yo, I almost got arrested. Oh, this is fire. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a clout fiend. I love the numbers. That rush and clout you get following a viral stream leads you to try and do whatever you can to do it again. However, broadcasting every second of your life to the internet is not healthy at all, especially considering the majority of these people in the chat just encourage drama and toxicity. I haven't been on my medicine. I'll admit. I haven't slept in 48 hours. I'll admit. I don't talk to anybody. Like, I don't even talk to my parents. Yeah, I don't really have anybody else. But I just... I have other, like, I just, man... When you just don't talk to anybody for so long, this gets to you. If there's one thing Ice Poseidon proved, it's that the problems he faced while IRL streaming are here to stay. From leaking a girl's phone number on literally the first day Twitch launched their new IRL genre, to constantly dealing with people known as stream snipers who see where you are and come pull up on stream, as well as again the dangerous act of swatting. Today, over six years later, IRL streamers of all sizes are still dealing with these issues constantly, with even entire subreddits dedicated to their failures. <laughs> And there's the fact that some of these streamers don't exactly respect people's privacy and request to not be on camera. Because, well, they simply just want the content. However, hundreds of thousands of viewers who watch live also want the content too. As the live streaming industry continues to grow with platforms like Twitch and Kick, along with YouTube and Rumble, after hearing how much money these streamers are raking in, it's no surprise why so many kids want to follow in their footsteps. Kai for sure got more money than, I think, 90% rapper. Eight and two, for sure. From now on, if you see any more clips of dudes running around in public hiding behind their security guards, you no longer have to wonder how they got so popular. Thanks to the help of streamers like Aiden Ross, Kaisenet, Fusi, and Neon, while only time will tell how long this wave lasts, at the moment IRL streaming is back and bigger than ever before.